This is what we call the procession of the equinox. And here is the thing about that 2012 event, which is set to be the shift. And the Mayan calendar prophecy was that if humanity would make it, if humanity would survive and not destroy itself, humanity would move into the highest consciousness that the planet has ever seen. This is the invitation for everybody for the shift. Is it possible that a part of the Creator is inside us? It's, it's in every single one. There's a piece of that which created us inside us. And Christ says that's the goal, that people would wake up to that. And when they do, they can wake up joyfully. They can wake up in the morning and be grateful. And earlier we mentioned the discussion about ETs. We mentioned that the Pleiadians came and seated us. Here's the next question. Okay, why haven't we seen them? Why haven't we met them? Uh, why haven't they, they shown up and, and landed on the White House lawn? And who are they? I've, I'll get an answer from Cry, just pretty basic in one sentence, but. Lee, Monica, Cryon, wherever you are in the ethers, welcome on the show. What are you both most excited about right now in your life? Monica, if you would love to start us off today. I am so excited that we have young people like yourself that are awakening to a bigger truth than what most of us were told when we were growing up. And the fact that we are doing this program, Emilio, just makes my heart sing. I have known Lee Carroll for many, many years now. And when he began channeling Cryon, Cryon told him not to go to main media because back then the energy would not support it. And so he was channeling Cryon for all these years to put it in a place where people who are seeking would actually find it. And now all of a sudden there is an explosion of YouTube channels and the internet on this very topic of finding channelers. And so Cryon is obviously, yes, now is the time where you can do this because... There is this amazing awakening happening on the planet and there is so much hope. There is such a bright future for all of us on this most beautiful earth planet of ours that we get the opportunity to share our lives with that it's exciting times. So that's what I'm most excited about. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Mm. You probably want to know what I'm excited about. And that yes, is, of course. <laughs> <laughs> We're both excited about the same thing. And if I can just just go deeper, this is my 34th year, Emilio. And she's right, is I never thought I would see this. Now, that just sounds negative. I never thought I'd see a time when there would be an awakening of young people. And what I mean young people, I, I just mean those who are invested in in, um, in starting their lives and, and raising families, usually in the past when I started, those were not the people interested in metaphysics. Those were not the people who were awakening to anything greater than making a living or what can they do. And that was hard enough. Now we're starting to see a tremendous interest in what else is there. Um, spiritually, is God bigger than I was told, if you want to use God? Is, is there something more? that nobody ever told me about <laughs> that mm. uh, I experienced and that Monica's experienced. And that simply wasn't on the minds of anybody under 45 back then. It just wasn't. And even that is a stretch. There was a lot of people who were retiring and that and they then they had time, I think, to think about it or their families were done and they had time to think about it. Now, um, our show, Healing Wednesdays, um, we've, we're in, we're going to be in our third year soon. And that mm -hmm. requires a, a guest every single week that has something to say 
about metaphysics or beyond the veil or things like that. We're booked through the year and working into next year because there, there are so many and they're all mm. on YouTube and they're all um, ones that have something to say that people are listening to and they're helping humanity. I never expected this. So this is my excitement. It goes with, with Monica's excitement too. I am staring at you right now and I know how old you are. And I just like going, yes, I knew that this would happen. And it's not that you're just interested. You are trying to push the envelope and you, you're interested enough to have people who um, come on your show and talk this way. And, and, and back then I thought, who would listen to this? And now I'm realizing hundreds of thousands of people are starting to awaken and listen to this. Beautiful. Now, I got excited from hearing both of you. Um, it really is an interesting time that we're living in. And Lee, around your 40s, you had a very esoteric, mystical experience where a previous partner of yours took you to the channeler. And, and in that experience, there was a lot of skepticism behind that. But three years after, the second channeler came by and told you a magnetic master named Cryon wants to get a hold of you. And for the last 34 years, as you said, you have been on this mission carrying out what Cryon, this angelic entity group, has said that they're bringing information for the shift. Hmm. So you briefly touched on those points, and I'd love to just encapsulate what the shift actually means right now in 2023 where we are i know this is the year of a lot of recovery as cryon has said mm -hmm. so what has this shift been been going on in and how can we start understanding it from a very uh, higher level perspective i love this question it's a passion of both lee and i yeah i'm gonna let monica go first if that's okay because she's got some numbers for you and uh let's do numbers i love yeah. it <laughs> well, that, you know, analytical it. mind in here <laughs> oh yeah she is very but the numbers are where are we in the shift i mean there this this is not a this is not a mystery this has been actually predicted uh, it has a time frame, it has a window, and she can tell you where we are in it. Yes, so we have many prophecies from the ancients, from the indigenous. You can look at the journey of the feathered serpent, the awakening of the puma, the eagle and the condor. And so there are many prophecies that talk about the shift. And the shift all centers around a date that everyone was told would be the end of the world, 2012. There's even movies that were made about, you know, the end of the world, 2012. And people love, they absolutely love talking about the Mayan calendar where it ended at 2012. And yet, if you look at that Maya calendar, they developed this system based on the rotation of the sun, planets and moons. And they created what they call a long count. And mm. the long count is approximately 5,000 years. Let's just say approximately 5,000 years. And so they began that calendar as the birth of our universe, the creation of the universe. And so each time a long count finished and a new one began, it was another creation of a universe cycle. And so the 2012 Mayan calendar, the ending of it is simply the ending of one creation cycle and the birth of a universe. But why 2012 is so significant, it has to do with the procession of the equinoxes. And I know I'm now getting into astronomy. I'm not an astronomer, but essentially, the earth is on an axis that is tilted and there is a wobble of the earth and this wobble takes 26,000 years for the earth to move from one point all the way around and finish to the next point. Now, mm -hmm. 2012 is what they call the galactic 
alignment. It's not a metaphysical term. It's an astronomy term and it's when all the planets align up. And this is what we call the precession of the equinox. And here is the thing about that 2012 event, which is set to be the shift. And the Mayan calendar prophecy was that if humanity would make it, if humanity would survive and not destroy itself beyond 2012, humanity would move into the highest consciousness that the planet has ever seen. So that is the prophecy. But why I mentioned the fact that the earth wobbles for 26,000 years is that the 2012 event is not just that year alone because the December solstice sun, it takes 36 years for it to precess through the sun. And that means the 2012 event is actually a 36 year event. So the shift actually began in 1994 and that period of 36 years, 2012 was the midpoint, 18 years in, and then 2030 is the the end of that 36 year precession through the December, through the Saltus sun. And that shift is where everything is being recreated, restructured. And because we have made it, we have to figure out how we can move forward with new values that we have as a society, as a civilization together. The old values was the victor goes to um, the conqueror, war, lack of resources, we have to sequester and fight. The new values of humanity is balance, harmony, integrity, kindness, compassion, and, and love to each other. That's where we're headed. And so you see what you are seeing right now is the restructuring of what was and the collapsing of things that are no longer able to move into that new future are falling away. And it's a little messy, I have to say. It's a little messy. And even Cryon said, you will see things and you won't like it. And yet this is our role as an old soul spiritual seeker is to absolutely 100% know that we have a bright future. There is so much hope on the planet. There is so much delivery of support. I even want to give it a name, spiritual intervention. That is what we are experiencing right now. There is so much help from invisible energies that are real, supporting us collectively because we made that decision that we wanted to move beyond 2012 into a land where we have balance, peace, harmony, compassion, integrity, and kindness. Mm -hmm. So that's my kind of snapshot about 2012. And then, Lee, did you want to add any more to that? Yeah, let's start over here. Just um, not start over, but rewinding to back to what you said <clears throat> and continue the discussion. Um, <clears throat> I want everybody to know this is not a surprise. So what Monica has set the stage for is the fact that this was prophesied. It wasn't mm -hmm. just the Mayan. This is not just a Mayan prophecy at all, although they're the most popular ones because they had the 2012 calendar and it ended and it was pretty spectacular. Uh, it was just um, a little while ago that we were at the, um, the Hopi prophecy rock. So the Hopi Indians, they have the same thing. And it is, it's, I mean, it's really the same thing. When you take a look mm -hmm. and analyze what is on that rock, which is a, it's a glyph, 
um, an ancient one, you can see that their prophecy is the same thing. It takes it right up to where we are, and then there's a split on that glyph that says you can go in two directions. But everybody's talking about in these prophecies the same thing. Something was going to happen at the precession of the equinoxes if we were still here. So I went through the Cold War. I went through all of these things. There was a question for a long time whether we mm. would destroy ourselves. I mean, that we suddenly we had the opportunity to, we had the wherewithal to, we had the technology to, and we didn't. So this is important as well, because when st people start talking about the next phase of what's going to happen in AI and all of that, <clears throat> the main fear is we're going to destroy ourselves. <clears throat> Sorry. Because that's what the movies have told us. So that's that's another yeah. story about we have been in really indoctrinated toward um, all of the things that could happen. And, if, and, and of course, they're, most of them are negative. I want to tell you something. There is so much hope here. And yet, we are in a very, very difficult time. So let me set a stage. If you have a, a home you've lived in where you didn't have electric light, you've had only torches, and maybe later you had some flashlights, suddenly the lights get turned on, not just a little, but a lot. Let's say you have a major light being turned on in your house. The dirt will show. And not just the dirt, all the bugs will come crawling out of the places you didn't think were even had bugs. What yeah. you thought was clean is not. What you knew perhaps was going to be a little dirty is really dirty. And everybody can see it. So here is the premise. We're looking at the light being turned on and the dirt is showing. But there's even more. There are such an, I would say, a push backwards. There are those, according to Cryon, who are so invested in a darker time, in a corrupt time, in a time where things didn't have a light on. They're so invested, they'll do anything they can to pull it back. So they want to pull it back to the way it was. And that's exactly what has happened. Who expected a war? a 1940s-style war to happen in the middle of this? And the answer is almost nobody. It was a shock and a surprise. There are those invested in wanting to pull it back. And, mm. and I want to tell you, that investment of pulling it back and creating a war isn't just in Russia or what you're seeing. There's a lot of investment in making that happen. So Later, I think we're going to find out a lot of things we don't know about who is who is invested in that. Mm. It is there. There's so much of it. And those people, they're going to be exposed. And yeah. in that exposure, the public called the humanity is not going to like it. It is not going to accept it. I mean, already, if you take a look at when you have awards and then suddenly Switzerland takes sides, you know, there's there is something <laughs> different here. That, Something's that, different. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, that's just the war. Look at huh. all the things that are being exposed. Folks, the earth is not going into the toilet. It's mm. having a light turned on. And, the, and in that, there is ugly, ugly stuff. And it's going to continue for a while. But we're starting to clean it up. And the part, and the clean, part of the cleanup is a higher um, desire for a peaceful planet, a higher consciousness that will not tolerate these things. We're, we're starting to look at very old systems and starting to see stuff that was always there that today we're not going to tolerate. Mm. We're not going to, I mean, take a look at, um, I, we can start uh, um, counting them on our hands. You take a look at um, the Catholic Church, which has had all of these issues with priests abusing kids. And you go, I mean, it doesn't get worse than that in a spiritual yeah. organization. Now you have a pope that says, we, we can't have that. It's, by the way, it's a pope that nobody expected. It's a pope that, uh, I mean, you still have two existing popes. I mean, who expected that? So yeah. what you're seeing is that even the church is trying to is saying, this isn't right. We're going to clean this up. They're looking at it. There's, there's so many things right now that show you a cleanup is happening. 
And mm. people say, why isn't it happening faster? I'll tell you, it's it's not just generationally, but sometimes um, the old folks they gotta die before <laughs> before the new folks can come in and take place. That that's part of what we're waiting for is the attrition, the the old guard to finally die out, because it's tough to replace the things that have that much power and money. It will be replaced. Look for some major pins to fall in the next few years. Uh, even the way we do things is going to start changing because people are saying that ain't working. And for the mm -hmm. first time, I think humanity is really invested in this change. If you took a poll right now around the planet, everywhere, and ask, what do you want? I don't think that you're going to get, well, we want, we want this to fall and that to fall and these people to do the right thing. No, they want peace. They want, they want pe schools to work uh, all over the planet. They would like to, to have the same restaurants, be able to go to, walk <laughs> down the street and have some food, you know, and cleaning up some things that, that have been sequestered of why countries right now in some parts of the world are still starving. And, mm -hmm. and you start to realize that can change and will change. All of this is happening right now called the shift. And in the process, you have the chance to look at it the way I've just given you, or you can fall on your sword. And that's just a metaphor for everybody who is saying we're doomed. And there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that. No hope. Look at the planet. What's next? Look at all the shootings. Look at all. This is a dark energy trying to reestablish itself, make you afraid, stay in the house. <laughs> <laughs> And I think the work that is needed for that is to anchor as much light, because obviously where there is dark, there is going to be light. But if the dark forces are beginning to start trying to gain more control, it's the job of the light to balance and come out on the other side as well. And there's two important messages that I highlighted from Cryon that I was listening to and it really goes off what you talked about, this secrecy that we've seen for the past years where even governments have hidden things from the public, um, religious organizations, people all around the world, even in our personal relationships, a lot of secrecy going on and lack of wisdom. And two important messages that Kryon mentioned that I'd love to hear sort of your take as well is there, they said that there should be a need for an indigenous council of wisdom in the UN and top organizations around the world. And second, governments to reveal information that they know about extraterrestrials. So I'd love to tackle these two messages um, from different perspectives, um, whoever wants to begin. But these, I think, are really prevalent now, as we're seeing right now, even with Dr. Stephen Greer's work, how he confronted right now the U.S. Congress with all the evidence that he's accumulated over the past decades uh, about extraterrestrial um, knowledge and also this attack on indigenous cultures around the world. So these two messages, I don't know how you guys want to begin with this, but tackling it um, because they're two big topics. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do the ET thing. <laughs> awesome. And, and I love the indigenous. And she knows that, yeah, awesome, yeah, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> a little okay. bit of, of everything for everyone out here. Yeah, absolutely. So with the indigenous, crime was right and said that there should be a wisdom council is what I remember Cryon saying mm -hmm. on the UN and that they should be appointed from their planetary lineage, not their government credentials. Mm -hmm. I love Cryon's all, Cryon never, if you notice, gives names of people. He always gives reference to that we kind of figure out who Cryon is talking about. So Cryon was definitely yeah. talking about the indigenous wisdom keepers, the earth keepers. But I love that it was postured that they have a planetary lineage, not government credentials. And I'll let Lee talk about his experience channeling at the United Nations and the outcome of the Indigenous Council. But I want to just 
bring you on a story and a journey with me for a little while because all over the planet there have been the Indigenous earth keepers who have the missing piece that the rest of modern civilization have forgotten about. And that missing piece is the deep connection that we share with our beautiful planet. And she's called Mother Earth. Mother, she's nurturing, giving, compassionate, sacrifices everything she has so that her children may live. This is the epitome of mother. And we have Mother Earth, who is more than just a place we inhabit and share. She is deeply connected with us. There is sentience within the earth. And there is this soul connection that we share with the earth. She is part of us. As goes human consciousness, goes Gaia. As goes Gaia, goes human consciousness. There is a mirroring that goes on with Gaia. Gaia cooperates with human consciousness. And that's why earlier I said I was so excited about this shift because people are awakening. And with Mm -hmm. that awakening, we return to the knowingness that our earth is alive and we are deeply connected to her. So back to the story, all over the planet, the indigenous have known this, have walked on the earth knowing they are a part of it, have given thanks to Father Sky, Mother Earth, so that when they have the resources they have, they are able to give ceremonies of thanks and alignment and gratitude and all that they needed was always provided. And so the Earth Keepers have known about this deep connection and yet they all did their own thing. In about 1994, there was a gentleman by the name of Tigre Raimundo Perez, and he had this vision of all of these Indigenous coming together in ceremony in this deep pit with a fire. And so he knew that it was up to him to begin connecting the Indigenous brothers and sisters to come together in ceremony. And back then, you did not share anything from within your lineage with another that's outside of your lineage. So if you're Hopi, you protect everything you do as a Hopi. And same with the Lakota, same with uh, the Maya. You, You keep and sequester what you have because it's sacred information. And yet he had this vision that we would all they would all come together and share this. And this vision ended up becoming a reality in the 2000s. And there's so many movements that have occurred of the Indigenous coming together. One of them is called Raices de la Tierra, and it stands for the roots of the earth. Mm. And it has gatherings of Indigenous all coming together, praying for the earth, praying for humanity, joining together. And so to me, I see the efforts of Raimundo Tigre Perez as birthing the collaboration between the indigenous. And then the next movement out of that, that I have seen follow, and again, you don't see this on the main media, but the next movement to come out of that is the wise indigenous shamans, the earth keepers, the wisdom keepers are sharing their knowledge with those who are outside of even indigenous cultures. So they are bringing to the planet because it is time for us to all embrace this knowledge and for us to all become earth keepers and those who are awakening to a bigger truth are ready now to receive 
this wisdom from shamans. And we we have so many around the planet, whether it's from the Kiero tribes up in the Andes of South America to those who are in North America, the Lakota, to whether they're kahunas in Hawaii and all over the planet, there is this return to the wisdom of the ancients. And growing up in Australia, I saw the terrible things that happened to the Aboriginals living in Australia. And there's so many deep wounds there that have happened. And so now is the time to have reconciliation, to have honouring, to allow them to have a voice, an important voice to share with us of this deep wisdom and knowledge that they have because we all inhabit this planet. Mm. We all share her resources. And so Mm. that's, I guess, it's already happening, not just in the UN. I think there is many who are awakening and they're attracted to learn more about what truths they have, what cosmology they know about. And so we're going to see more and more of this Indigenous knowledge coming forth and being shared with our planet. And that's what I'm excited about. So over yes. to Lee and the ETs. <laughs> yes. One one thing I wanted to mention before that is you mentioned the Aboriginals in Australia and I had a conversation with Billy Carson and he was actually with those Aboriginals um, in, in a trip to Australia. And he says that when asked, these Aboriginals say that they were seated here by, by a galactic... Uh, civilization from the Pleiadian star system yes and that maneuvers directly into Lee's aspect on extraterrestrials because I believe that humanity was actually placed here Um, well since you mentioned it I will share that Lee and I had the privilege to be in Uluru which is the middle of Australia it's very very sacred to the Ananu And their creation story is that they were seeded by the Seven Sisters. Now, the Seven Sisters represents the cluster of stars that we know as the Pleiades. Mm. And their creation story is actually part of a 3,000-mile song line across the desert that tells the story of the Seven Sisters. So when you learn your creation story you are traveling across a 3,000 mile landscape within the desert. And there are various landmarks and songs and ceremonies that depict all of the things that happened and took place. And Mm -hmm. all of their communication has happened through orality. So here is a culture that for 50,000 years have been living in the moment, living with the knowledge of who their ancestry is. And in fact, there are places at Uluru where they say you are forbidden to go to because the ones whose names you cannot pronounce still live there. And so all of what they contain lines up with what many Indigenous have as their creation story, which also matches up with what Cryon has given us as well, that we were seeded by those from the stars and they came from the Pleiades. So now that we have that as our mm-hmm. context, who are they? Yes. Yes, let's, let's let Lee talk <laughs> about that. <laughs> who are they, Lee? Give us the scoop. <laughs> give us the inside scoop. <laughs> Grant talks about a um, a man on an island, and he he's on this little tiny desert desert island. Somehow he was born there, and and he's not alone. He's with other people, and he sits on the beach and he ponders something. He's never been anywhere. 
He'd never been uh, because the desert island and can't get off of it. Sitting on the beach and he's pondering, I wonder if there are some other beaches. Now, he's on Earth where there's, of course, millions of beaches. And Earth is, is it works the same way. Nature creates beaches. And, and Crian says, you are like the man. And he said, for many, many years, humans had looked out into space and they said, we're alone. Even though what you have in our universe and our galaxy has a commonality, especially this galaxy, and we know that everywhere you look, the physics is the same. The creations are the same. And we were even wondering whether there are any other planets a while back. So let's talk about that for a moment. You see where I'm going with this. If you, let's talk to an astronomer. Now, astronomers are tough to talk to because they only come out at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, good one, good one. <laughs> there is, an, there is there's a billion dollars or more, billions perhaps, being spent right now on finding planets. The Webb Telescope, the newest one, they call the Planet Finder. Can, uh, because of AI, because of all kinds of very, very clever ways, we are now able to detect planets around very, very far away stars. And what we have discovered will blow you away. Talk about planets. There's, there's millions and millions of them suddenly. So let's narrow it down. Let's find planets that are only in the Goldilocks zone. Now, that would be the place where the temperature is right and they're far enough away from the sun. They would have an atmosphere, maybe a magnetic grid. All the things that created ours is the same physics that could create any of them anywhere. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. are we on one beach on the planet? No. The galaxy has many, many, many um, uh, planets. However, how many have you found that could be Earth-like? So they're even calling them, how many Earth-like planets have they discovered? And the answer, hundreds, hundreds. And some of them are fairly close, 40, 50 light years away. And you start to realize, wow, the potential for planets like ours is everywhere. Now, yeah. now that's from astronomy, folks. That's not from a uh, channeler. That's not from mesophysics. That's right from science. Now, if you start also asking NASA and the other place, uh, uh, other uh, um, jet propulsion laboratories, all that, what is the emphasis? The emphasis is finding life. They expect it. Now, they're expecting maybe microbes, life on the moons of Jupiter, of Uranus, all of these things. They, the probes have life detection kits on them that we're sending out. So do the ones on Mars. We are looking for it because, ready? We expect it now. So what are the odds, do you think, of having billions of stars, billions of planets, and there being void of life? What happened here, according to Cryon, happened almost everywhere. So the, our galaxy is teeming with life. Now, here's the next question. Okay, why haven't we seen them? Why haven't yeah. we met them? Um, why haven't they, they shown up and, and landed on the White House lawn? And who are they? Why is it being hidden? Yeah, why the <laughs> hidden? Uh, I've, I've, I'll get an answer from Cryon that's pretty basic in one sentence. But the, the next part of this is um, the age of Earth compared to the age of uh everything else we're seeing. Life got a very late start here on this planet, uh, up to a million years too late. It could have started. It had, according to um, those who studied, it had actually four starts that failed, and it took a very, very long time. Other planets, did you say, well, life could have started the same way it started here, the same physics, the same, same beaches. And so, there is the potential that there was life like ours in our galaxy a million years before we got started. Now, that gives you a little snapshot of perhaps what has happened if you look at the whole idea of 
having ascended planets or them having realizations or them having a shift or them having all kinds of things about what we believe is the creator that exists. A God, if you wish, the God, our God, who loves us. And that is what Krein has said. There is a creative source that created this galaxy, created all the life, created everything else. That was the first intuition of, of, of I would say, uh, Earth. Um, that's why all of the religions formed as they did. Did you, you realize that, that if you polled plant, according to, according to uh, Time magazine, if you polled the earth right now, 80% of the earth would believe in an afterlife. 80% of the earth believes in God, in a creator. Now, that's a slam dunk. I mean, that doesn't even happen in statistics. There's yeah. something inside us. Yeah, that, that's going to go up. That number is going to go up after they start listening more to this show. <laughs> I, 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 know. I know. There is something inside us in our DNA that says, we didn't get here by accident. You, mm -hmm. you take a look at Greg Braden's book, uh, Human by Design. Now, there's, yeah, there's no it. metaphysics in there. It's all science. And he shows where we have 23 chromosomes. And it happened about uh, 200,000 years ago. That is the time frame of what Krein says. The Pleiadians came. Um, that's intervention. That All of that stuff. But back to ETs, they are here. And they are watching us. And they're looking at us. And some of them are more advanced than others or more scented than others. And we know this. Just like... You know, when, when we go to various countries, there we, we have different strokes for different folks. Some of them are dangerous. But why is it that they haven't landed and said hello a long time ago? And the answer is this. We're barbaric. <laughs> we're dangerous. We're the we're, hostile ones. <laughs> we're hostile. And, of course, they're afraid to come down. I mean, we're going to shoot them out of the sky, number one, and ask questions later. And we're still that way. That's going to change after the shift. There are so many people. If you if you went did a poll right now, say, do you believe in ETs? Most people would say, yeah, they're out there. Instead of, of, of rolling their eyes and saying, you're nuts, uh, get in the closet where you belong with other nutty people. More people are starting to realize not just the odds that they would be there, but expecting something someday where we'll meet them. And when we do, and when we're not hostile, and when we're not <laughs> going to hurt them, we're going to hear all about it. And that's the day I'm going to be here. I may not look like this, <laughs> but I'm going to be here because I believe in um, the life cycle and uh, past lives and this, this whole thing that of course, was the first intuition of the, the first, I think, religious group and that ever happened hundreds and hundreds of years ago on the planet. That was Hinduism. That was their first stable that we have mm -hmm. past lives. We're not just here one time. We have a soul that repeats and learns things. That is a great system that was kind of erased, I think, from uh, modern religion. You know what else was released from modern religion? Go find a doctrine right now in any kind of modern religion, in any church system at all, that sees Gaia as a partner. And that is the system of our ancients. And that's what we got to return to. And back to what Monica said and what, what Krein said at the UN. I've been there seven times, been invited to be there seven times. And the second time is when Krein told governments and said, tell them what you know, so that people wouldn't be afraid. So people would understand that they're out there and um, they're watching and they're helping to some degree. And they may have even seeded us going from mm -hmm. what we saw as cavemen and their DNA making a, dra a dramatic change 200,000 years ago. Yet yeah, you don't. What if I told you you weren't fully human? That That's an eye roller. And someday <laughs> I um, wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> no, no, you have got you. All of us have some DNA from the stars. And that's because there was intervention in order yeah. to get us on a path that we can find this creator and eventually have a shift and maybe go into kindness and compassion so that in a couple hundred thousand years, we may have an ascended planet. That may be the plan. The whole mm. thing. Why we're here. Why we exist. What if we existed to find God within? What if? Mm. I mean, what if yeah. that was the whole thing to begin with instead of some other crazy things? Does it really sound that crazy that there could be life everywhere and that they're staying away just because we're still barbarians? And we are. <laughs> yeah. It's only been in the last, I think, 10 to 15, 20 years that we're starting to wake up to the fact that this planet 
could exist as one, as one planet with kindness, and we and we treat each other in a way that isn't barbaric. And if you go back, I'm just a few hundred years. Um, all we had was a conquering. That was the big thing. Conquer the, the country next to you, which is exactly what we're seeing today in other terms. Please don't send me letters because there is various ideas of who started what and what's going on. I don't care. I just know that we have a barbaric war that's right out of the 40s, and it's, it just smacks of being inappropriate, wrong, and controlled. So... Uh, to some degree, I even think COVID was that way. I mean, COVID, it was so bad. There's so many people died. And I would, have, I would have hoped the reaction to it would have been different. And it wasn't. Everybody got on board to shut us down. And I think that was a, um, a plan to see if they could do it. <laughs> There's, there are a lot of, I would not say dark energies, but um, inappropriate old energy that mm-hmm. pops in and tries to make things worse. Now, you, uh, this has nothing to do with ETs, but it, can I tell you something that I was so disappointed with at the yes. beginning of COVID? Is that all right if yeah, I go there? Of course, yes. Okay. And this comes to old energy that wants to establish itself, make you afraid, and control you. This has always been the way it is. COVID happened so, so sad, so many people dying. And I watched our news. And I was in Iceland watching our news. And what I saw, I couldn't believe. It said, I saw statistics of how many people were catching it and how many people were dying. And I wanted, and I went, and? And I never saw the recovery column. And the recovery column is over 90%. It looked to the news, if you watch them, the earth was dying. Be afraid. Be very afraid. So stay in your house, do as you're told, and all these things because it's coming to get you. That's what I saw. I never saw what some of the news wasn't reporting. In, I mean, in, in Queens, New York, they were having celebrations of people graduating out of the hospital, 90% recovery. We never got that information. And that told me everything. This is not going to turn out well, and it didn't because it just kept getting worse and worse. We didn't get any hope. And that is an old energy, folks. And that is what we're going to start straightening out. I want to tell everybody, don't watch the news. Don't watch the news. Because it's scored with music. It's designed to to frighten you. And it is entertainment. Read your news. Get it from your favorite news feed that you trust. When you read it, it won't have quite the spin on it. It'll have that a broadcaster will be able to to give you. And you're not even aware you're getting it. And the, the whole reason is so they can sell more products and come compete with the other new, news. It's still an old energy system. It's about fear. That's going to change. Watch the dominoes fall with big pharma, with all manner of things. And someday, since we're talking about ETs, Brian says, we'll meet them. When the time is right, and it'll be appropriate, it'll be beautiful, it'll be celebrated, and we're going to take a sigh of relief that, that there's somebody out there who understands compassion and kindness. Mm. Sure, there's the riffraff. Brian talks about them because there's a lot of kinds of, of ETs. But believe me, someday we'll meet the ones that actually see it us. Hmm. Thank you so much for that. And Lee, I wanted to ask you, a couple of years ago, I believe, not too long ago, uh, Cryon told you, why are you segmenting me? <laughs> and there was a process that came through that you started beginning to call the integration or the meld. Um, because from what I've seen, some channelers, it does take them some time to reach channeling state. And when I've seen you do it, it's almost instantaneous now. What has that process even unfolded for you, becoming more of that sort of higher frequency and integrating more with the energy of Cryon? 
I think just briefly, it was when Krein says you're playing church. And I said, what does that mean? Isn't Krein's not against church. He just was comparing it to the paradigm we have where we live like we want to. And then once a week we go to church and we all dress for the occasion and wear costumes, see others wearing costumes, do our thing, and then go back. to the other. So in other words, we schedule time for spirituality. And he says, that's what you're doing. You're having meetings and you're channeling and then you go home. So he said, uh, every time you sit in a chair and you channel, you're different. He says, don't be different. He says, it's time for the melt, 24-7. It's like you're going to sit in the chair and channel me 24-7 so that I'm always available all the time, no preparation, no body changes. Because the angel that is cryon, the angel that is whoever you have, your higher self or whatever, is always there. Spirit is always always there your soul the beauty of a bigger soul that you have is always there so why are we only putting on the clothes once a week and and finding it then and worshiping then when we could have it every single hour of the day and that's what Christ says was the integration this is the invitation for everybody for the shift is it possible that a part of the creator is inside us I think that's even taught in some of the major religions on the planet still. God's inside you. Um, this, it's, it's in every single one. There's a piece of that which created us, inside us. And Christ says that's the goal, that people would wake up to that. And when they do, they can wake up joyfully. They can wake up in the morning and be grateful. And, and that starts to eliminate anxiety and worry. You know. Life is life, and we're always going to have the things that are there. But what if there was a way that we could control, at least kind of like not step on as many potholes as we do now, mm -hmm. or perhaps live longer, uh, have less anxiety, um, don't worry about certain kinds of things? That's been proven. We have people working on that right now, and some people even call it the law of attraction or whatever. We're starting to see that consciousness is energy, and we can actually be part of what's going to happen next. And so it, this, is, this is what the shift is about. That's what's going on, let's say, under the table of whatever, whatever else you're seeing. And that's why you're here, honestly, with this show. Because you woke up to something like this. And you said, more people should know about this. So let's get it going. And you have us. You have other people. And it becomes then something that people enjoy watching. I would say, even if they're not interested in the woo-woo, maybe they're not religious, but they're looking at a bigger hope. There's something else going on mm -hmm. here that can apply to every single human being on the planet, no matter what you believe. And it was really beautiful when we placed our intention at the beginning to really be that lighthouse for old souls, light workers, the indigo children of the world. And with everything you just mentioned about your process with Cryon, is there any transmission that Cryon wants to leave for the next generation of leaders at this moment? Yeah. Yeah. This is not your grandfather's world. Hmm. Don't emulate them. Don't fit into a system that they built. Look beyond the box to see what might be possible that nobody has thought of yet or nobody thought would work. Trust people more and give them more choice. And I love how you mentioned um, Greg Braden's work um, in, the last, in the last bit. And you mentioned the 23rd chromosome. In the last series of channelings, Kron has mentioned that we're beginning to unveil a 24th chromosome. So I'd love to sort of unpack that because it's essentially creating a new human. Um, I'd love to hear Monica's perspective on, on the 24th chromosome and then take it from there. Well, what a great question. And now we're really, I mean, if you had some of the topics in this conversation, a struggle. Well, now we're going to push that to the limit. So uh, Greg's wonderful book, Human by Design, talks about a fusion 
between chromosomes and the way they know it's a fusion at the end of the chromosome you have telomeres and it's they they fray as you age so like the shoelace the ends start to fray as it gets worn and so what they discovered is that chromosome number two it has this ancient relic of a telomere to telomere fusion right in the middle of the chromosome so that that is the clue that tells them we had 24 chromosomes and somehow they were fused together and created 23 and approximately 200,000 years ago is when this was seen and it hasn't changed since so it goes against what we have as the theory of evolution because the theory of evolution is that you change and you mutate and you you morph and you're creating new variety all the time so why is it that 200,000 years ago we had this change happen anatomically within us And there's been no alteration since then. It implies that everything we need to operate is already within us. And indeed, this is where Cryon said that the Pleiadians came with loving intent to give us our spiritual DNA. And this is when the fusion took place. And at the same time, we were imbued with a multi-dimensional chromosome pair to give us 24. The other information Cryon said, what has that 24th chromosome pair been doing Hmm. in humanity? And this is where it gets interesting because it has been dormant, waiting, Waiting for what, you might ask. Waiting for the shift. And so now that the shift is here, imbued into the earth, was a multidimensional grid system created by the Pleiadians that also gave us this 24th multidimensional pair. And think of it like a time capsule that was waiting to be released. And so now that we are in this shift where collectively we have said, yes, we want to move into an era of the highest consciousness that the planet has ever seen. And with that, there is a release of real time information of a consciousness that is from the Pleiades coming to our own time capsules within our body, released from the time capsules held within the earth. And this is part of the spiritual intervention that will push and carry us into a higher consciousness. Cryon said, just because you said, yes, I want this, it isn't automatic. There are tools (coughs) to assist us in this process. And earlier we mentioned the discussion about ETs. We mentioned that the Pleiadians came and seeded us. We mentioned that all over the earth, indigenous cultures that were separated geographically from each other and couldn't have possibly known the creation story all shared the same creation story. And then we mentioned that in the middle of Australia, in Uluru, the Ananu tell you, the ones whose names you cannot pronounce still live there. And the reason is because they never left. The consciousness of those who seeded us, those who some call our star mothers, are still very present, watching their children of humanity and assisting from a multi-dimensional state to give us support. And when we said there is more delivery of light on the planet and that you are the lighthouse, where does the lighthouse get its 
source, the supply to be able to generate its light. It comes from the creator. It comes from the Pleiadians who are hooked to the creator. It comes from all of these channeled informations that we are now seeing on the planet. And that is a limitless supply. And so you as a lighthouse know that you have a limitless supply to the light that you can create. And so that is what I wanted to share with you about the 24th chromosome pair. Thank you so much for that. Um, is there anything you want to add, Lee, to the to the 24th chromosome? It's um, <clears throat> it is a multi-dimensional pair. Unlike the 3D ones that you can look at, now we're getting spooky. There will be those who say, well, I don't believe any of this, uh, Lee, because uh, you're saying uh, they're invisible. Well, that is the catch-all, isn't it? It's there, but of course, it's invisible. <laughs> you can't see it. I used to think when I was de I was detracting from everything metaphysical, and they would say, this is happening, this is happening. You say, how convenient all the things you talk about are invisible. So this is one of those. However, we're looking at a nice thing that's taking place. Have you ever heard of quantum biology? There are those who are now studying the multidimensional aspects of our bodies, hmm. including our DNA. And there is some, uh, Vladimir uh, Poynin was one. Greg talks about him, a Russian scientist, who found out all manner of things that, that really showed that our DNA responds to multidimensional uh, energies. And so um, it, it, here it goes, and here we start. Is it possible that our chemistry has multi-dimensions that we cannot see. And now there are some quantum scientists who said, yes, it has to be because we're seeing magnetic influences and all that. So it's starting to give credibility to the fact that we really could have a 24th pair that has not shown itself, that's multi-dimensional. And as it gets released, there is your catalyst for the higher consciousness that we are we are starting to develop and ask for. It's always been there. So we don't have to climb stairs and do things or pay money or whatever to get to a higher thinking place. It is in us. It's already inbred and it's starting to be released with intent. You got to want it. So if you don't want it, it's not coming in. So don't worry about it. For all those who don't want to be tainted with this metaphysical stuff, don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll be just like you are forever unless you start looking. When you start looking, I can tell you it's going to show itself. You're going to find things. That's one of the premises of Cryon. Made you look. As soon as you start looking and asking the questions, you'll get answers. And some of them are going to change your life. So it starts this process of unfolding our evolution. It starts with intention. Is that what I'm, what I'm understanding? Amazing. And is it possible then that there are children being born into the world right now that have already activated that 24th chromosome, that new DNA, um, because we are seeing children come in now as Lee, you coined it, the, the indigo children that are psychically activated, that are tuning into abilities that to the normal human are like, what what is going on with this child? Um, and we're medicating them as a result. So is it possible then that there are humans now, the younger generations already coming in with this new energy? Absolutely. This, this is the evolution process for, for our ascended planet. It has to be. And you're going to start seeing when they're going to look as dramatically different as the indigos looked to um, your generation is that the kids are different. And you're going to say, why are they different? And you're right. First time you do when they're different is medicate them <laughs> so that they won't be different. We, this is what we do. We're constantly, you know, trying to squash these things. Krein has also said, it's very interesting that, um, and he's reiterated it several times and we're teaching it. It, it, uh, you carry with you some multidimensional, um, I would say energy, Till you're six years old, you can see angels, you can see ele elementals, you can see um, things around you in your room when you're three and four and five. These are the things that parents talk you out of. 
because you're still close to the other side of the veil. So it takes like six years for that to all get undone and you to be trained in, 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 uh, in 3D. Brian says we are in a multicolorful world living in black and white. Answer your question, they're already being born. You're going to see them. They're going to be different. They'll be the leaders that, that don't have to try much and to see what's wrong here. <laughs> mm. Yes, yes. And one of the final topics I'd love to touch right now is we've heard a lot of talk of the feminine energy, the divine feminine energy surging uh, in the world right now. And we've lived many, many years prior in the patriarchy where the man, the the control, the power has has really been in in the center point. And I would love to know what your perspective is on this unfolding yeah. of the feminine energy. Let me speak first as a man, because I want a man to hear this and not be afraid that we're, you know, swinging the other direction. Really, what Crian has said and really what we've been missing is that women should always have had the leadership that is spiritual on the planet. They're the mothers. They're the ones who are compassionate. They're the ones who raise the children. They have the equipment for counseling and softness. Uh, Krein has said, you know, when the, the strongest warrior is, dialing, is dying on the battlefield, uh, you know, with his blood spilling out in the dirt, he's calling for his mother, not his father. Mothers are the ones that we, that we look to for help. Krein has said, this is where the leadership should come from for divine divinity. Uh, your, your priests should be women. Your pastors should be women. And in that, there's a balance then between men and women. It's not that women are going to, the, the divine feminine is going to take over the world. The divine feminine, just by its definition, divine feminine. The ones that are with the shamans, the healers, the, as I say, the priests, the pastors, the ones we turn to for spiritual help. Now, that's the balance that Crian talks about. I hope, uh, you know, everybody understands that instead of, you know, going the other way and having women just run the world. There's got to be, a, there will be a balance. That's what Uluru, that's what we saw with the Aborigines. They have, from the beginning, have said the women are the ones who are the shamans. And they have a separate part that is divine in even in Uluru, and the men have their part. If you interviewed an Aborigine, and they would tell you this balance, and the men love it, and the women love it. Everybody has their role in this that they're good at. And they, they, com they trust each other and combine this for their society. And that's, that's, isn't it interesting? Well, what Krein says is get back to what the ancients know <laughs> and what happened there. And so it's not about women taking over the world. Divine feminine is about women taking over their spiritual place in the world. Mm. That's my, my take. And, mm. you know, it's interesting with the prophecy of the eagle and the condor. In that prophecy, the eagle represented the northern hemisphere of the planet and the condor represents the southern hemisphere of the planet and again in the metaphor the eagle represents the masculine properties and it was about war and conquer and yet the condor was about the feminine which is about the emotions and the softness and the feminine nature and so the prophecy was when the eagle and the condor unite and fly together balance will be restored and so I love the idea of having a balance of the masculine and the feminine working together in unification and when you look at the properties of the wise divine feminine, the words that come to mind are things like nurture, love, compassion, understanding, patience, kindness, tolerance, wisdom. And so they're all the words that come together with that. But 
it's equally important to have the masculine energies. When you what what are the words that come to mind with with masculine? Protection, courage, strength, endurance, support. We both need the other. And so I really want to reiterate that it's not about one gender being better than the other. It's about the different qualities of the genders working in harmony with each other towards that goal of balance, harmony, peace, and oneness. Hmm. So that's that's my take. Yeah, and even knowing that those equal and opposite energies are inside of us and we yes. can work with the feminine energy when we need to and be that which is needed. If we need to put in masculine energy toward getting this project off the ground, then we can tap into it. Yes. If we need that energy to support someone that is going through a loss in their life, we can tap into the feminine. So it's really about, as you said, being that multidimensional being that we are. Um, to wrap up, I, I really wanted to ask you this, um, Lee, because Cryon has sort of an intro and outro uh, when he comes in. And the, when he begins, he says, greetings, dear ones. This is Cryon of Magnetic Service. You've covered what Magnetic Service is in many other interviews, but I'd really love to know why Cryon signs off with In Love With Humanity. What exactly is or are they in love with about humanity? That's easy. <laughs> if we have a piece of the creator inside, that's what they're in love with. Pieces and parts of us that we are, are finding and recognizing and the fact that we have done it. In love with humanity means that we didn't necessarily have any predestined place. This shift may not have happened. Being in love with humanity means you did it. You crossed the bridge. You are on an ascension path. I mean, it's like watching your kids graduate <laughs> and you didn't know if they ever would or if they'd even survive, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Prime sees all of this and, and every single time, and I feel it, it's like, wow, what you're doing, we've seen on other planets and you're, you're going faster than anybody we've ever seen and you're, you're doing the job. We're in love with you. Thank you. And if I may add, Lee, mm -hmm. when Cryon says I'm in love with humanity, what we do here on our planet, our small little blue earth in the vastness of the galaxy that is out there, Cryon says that when we awaken and move to ascension, in a way we unlock massive enormous changes throughout the galaxy that are so esoteric crying can't even explain it to us and we made the choice to incarnate knowing that it would be difficult knowing that the creator would be hidden from us and yet we discovered it anyway and we're doing it collectively so all of that is packed into I am in love with humanity because if we knew the full extent of what we are doing here on earth, it would blow us away because it is grander than anything anyone has told us or what you could even think about. Thank you yeah. for that, Monica. And to end every episode, we have a segment called the final trio, which are rapid fire questions that you can answer in any way that you want. Uh, the first two questions are personalized to the guests. In this case, both of you, um, I would love to receive an answer from each one for each question. Um, but before that, I know people are going to want to connect with you. Uh, these young leaders are going to want to hear Cryon's channelings where can they find that information? Where can they connect further with your work? So the Cryon Channelings is very easy. Cryon.com slash free audio. That will take you to thousands of hours of Cryon Channels. Cryon.com slash free audio. 
And if you're interested in some of our programs that we offer, which is weekly Cryon with the Healing Wednesday program, they can go to cryonmasters.com. That's all one word, cryonmasters.com. And, <laughs> of course, the YouTube channel. Yes. yes. And because there are so many Cry on YouTube channels because <laughs> they want to copy me and they have found <laughs> very, very profitable if they uh, monetize their uh, – I'll go into it. There's just a lot of them. If you want to go to my YouTube channel, there you'll find it as well, and there will, will be, and that's crying.com slash YouTube. Got it. We'll include everything in the links in the description. You can find it just by scrolling down. If you're listening on Spotify, YouTube, wherever it is, you, you'll find it. And now for the final trio. Um, these are interesting questions. Um, they're, they're, they're deep. Uh, you can answer in any way that you want. You can go from one word to a whole monologue whatever you whatever you feel called to to tell us um with the question but the first one goes like this crying has told us that the last two years were the years of revelation and now we are moving into a time as we also said in the interview into a time of recovery so i'd love to ask both of you what was your most important revelation from last year and what are you recovering from this year? Well, that's I, easy for you. You go I'm, first. I'm recovering from open heart surgery. <laughs> wow. And that, and that is what happened to me. And it's it's a Lee 2.0. We, mm. we make, we're we going to make these quick because we have another podcast coming. <laughs> Got you. Yeah. And your revelation was oh, that Oh, my revelation? <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> I Honestly, I didn't know whether this, this was going to be a uh, time when I'm supposed to move on. Uh, I mean, that's that sounds over dramatic, but we've had many people who we know had that decision made, even uh, and we were shocked and surprised. So um, I've got lots of time left. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think for me, my revelation is just how connected Lee and I are and the open heart surgery brought us together in an even deeper way. There's not many couples I think that work together, live together, our soulmates together and and have this kind of joint mission that they share and then they still get along with each other. <laughs> so mm, mm. And we do. Lee is my best <laughs> friend and my mentor, my equal, my partner, my soulmate, my lover. So the the revelation is I guess part of the you know bigger picture that we have with cryon and yes we we i'm not sure i'm in the recovery yet fully <laughs> i'll yeah, be honest i yeah, will be honest working on it, i i feel that these last two years particularly for humanity as well is that we i think we're still in recovery from the shock of all the revelations mm. that have happened mm. so i i feel that there will be more kind of recovery and possibly even more revelations to come, which will then generate more recovery as well. Because you know mm. yourself in a healing journey, it doesn't just happen instantly. You have uh, recovery, then you could have setbacks, and then you keep going into recovery. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And as you said, you guys are a beautiful synergy. Um, just the way that you bounce off each other. It's beautiful to witness. Like oh. I've never had an interview with two people and I was like, like getting a little bit like, oh my God, two people, this is going to be <laughs> insane. And then it's just flowed so easily. Um, so I really thank you for that collaboration and for coming together on this mission. The last question, we call it the time capsule question, which interestingly you called um, Monica the time capsule of our bodies and of Gaia. Mm -hmm. um, but this is sort of an allegory where you are given the opportunity to travel 20, 25, 30 years out into the future when the shift has progressed even further. And people from my generation are stepping into leadership positions in the world. And you have the chance to insert into a time capsule anything that you believe will 
equipped these new leaders on their journey um, to create the new earth, to lead the shift even further. And you can include anything that you want in that time capsule. It could be physical objects. It could be metaphysical, invisible, a frequency, energy, technology, whatever you feel is necessary for these next generations to um, equip themselves in order to lead the new earth. What would you both include in that time capsule? I think for me, I want to have one of Cryon's phrases, which would be, and add a little, little to it, mm -hmm. and it would be this. Well done. Keep going. You are the hope of the, fla hope of the planet <laughs> and the forerunner of the galaxy. Beautiful. I want him to oi. Oi. <laughs> Suddenly we can't talk. Put, Put some talk. oil. Give him oil. some oil. <laughs> oil in there, like extra virgin oil. I want to say um, when you open the capsule, I want it to flood you and everything around you with joy. And I want you to wake up every day with joy. And that's how you're going to lead the planet joyfully. Yes. And on the cover of the time capsule is a question that you can leave behind a contemplative question something that they will see before they open it. What question to help them reflect and take with them um, to maybe seek answers of the universe? What question would you leave behind? Well, mine would be, how many times did you laugh today? <laughs> That's a good one. Oof. Mm. My, mine is, um, do you wake up joyful? Yes. I mean, do you see how, do you see where we're going with this? This is what we believe. <laughs> It's the key to everything. <laughs> Monica Lee, thank you so much, honestly, for, for being a light, for being a, a lighthouse into this world. It's been an honor diving into your work, uh, Lee, for you. Um, I know it's taken a lot of courage, getting over a lot of fears uh, in your path to be where you are today. And there are so many more people that are going to get impacted by your work. And Monica, for being that researcher, that investigator into these topics and, and truly finding patterns within the teachings of a multidimensional uh, entity, group, angelic being, that's quite a, a mission to take on. So I know, I have a feeling in my heart that we will, we will meet again, we will do this again, um, and that this will impact many, many lives. So thank you so much. Thank oh, you. well, it's been an absolute oh, pleasure. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Love.